wait till we hit the end times prophecy. We didn't even get to the part yet. We didn't even hit the tribulation part yet. And look at how much wealth your Bible has. And we're only where? We're only at Revelation 2. Man, how come churches don't teach this? That's right, how come churches don't teach this? See, they're not in a Bible-believing church. That's why I keep stressing so much. It's so important to attend a Bible-believing church. That way you can feed God's people, man. Look at this wealth, this wealth of knowledge that they hid from you. But who's known as hiding knowledge? That's Satan, right? That's the elites and conspiracies and masonry too, right? Secret, secret, hidden knowledge. Only the elites can understand, uh, not the common normal people. No, that's of the devil. Jesus Christ said, let babes understand the truth of God's words, not something hidden. <clears throat> where only you only have to be an elite to get it. By the way, we're all elite priests anyway, spiritually of Jesus Christ. Sorry, haha, <laughs> you know. Okay, so let's look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. All right, Thyatira, here we go. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, Thyatira, right? So God is now speaking to the church of Thyatira. Thyatira is a timeline of great darkness. It is a timeline where it was completely known as dark ages at time. Thyatira means odor of affliction. Odor of affliction. Uh, afflict. Man, I am not on a roll today. Okay. Sometimes in the bio, sometimes I see O D O U R or O D O R. You know, is it O D O U R? Okay, that's so, sometimes the Bible. What? It's both. Both, right? Yeah. Sometimes the Bible says O D O U R. So, yeah. so we'll just leave it like this, okay? So odor of affliction, and it is a church that time that went through tremendous affliction. So let's look at a church age application. Remember, so in a church age application. There was no time period that you could think of that was completely filled with odor of affliction. Smyrna, we saw bitterness and death, right? But I'm going to tell you something. Thyatira, the Catholic Church in its so-called Christian religious state, did worse persecution more than pagan Rome. Religious Rome was far worse than pagan Rome. If you hear the torture devices of the Roman Catholic Church, it made pagan Rome very pale in comparison. I have never heard of any torture worse. It's not the communists, it's not the Nazis. It is the Catholic Church during the Dark Ages. Their tortures were unspeakable. I never read anything worse than that. Next to the suffering of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I don't know anything worse. So this was a time period where there was great suffering. These things saith the Son of God. So Jesus is speaking here. He's known as the Son of God. Who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, so Jesus' eyes are like fire, and his feet are like fine brass. His feet is like fine brass in a furnace that is shining. We covered that at Revelation 1, right? All right, verse 19, I know thy works. So God knows every work that Thyatira did. And charity. So charity means love in action. So Thyatira had that. And service, how they served the Lord. And faith. So Thyatira believed on God. And thy patience. They were very patient because during this time period, it was so mingled with paganism and Christianity, and they were under torture. And notice he says again, and thy works. So he repeats works again right here. You notice that? Verse 19, he said works first time, but then the latter part of verse 19, he says works again. Why? Because the last part, and the last to be more than the first. So then there's something right here with Thyatira, and here we're going to get a little bit of preaching right here. So Thyatira had works twice, but one was last, the last to be more than the first. Did you remember something, what God warned the church of Ephesus? What God warned them? This is what happens when you give it thousands of years later. Look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. What did he say? Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because 
Thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the what? First works. What is this? Love. What did 1 Corinthians chapter 13 say? Though I give my body to be burned, like the dark ages, and have not charity, I am what? Nothing. You know what the church's problem is? I don't care even if you die for Jesus Christ. If you have poor Christian love, you, your, all your last works is bad. It's not as best compared to the first. You know what? Unfortunately, we live in a day and age we prioritize last works, not first works. Do you see why I stress so much about loving others, loving others, loving others, you know? Christian brothers and sisters in Christ, we shouldn't be arguing nitpicky. We should be loving each other. When we're giving the gospel to people, we shouldn't be doing it out of hatred, but out of love. Why do I keep stressing that so much? Because then all the works that this church will do is absolutely nothing then. And I don't care how many hours you prayed and how many souls you want to Jesus Christ, how many meetings you attend this church, you're nothing. That will preach. Okay, so let's look at verse 20. Verse 19 should make up most of the teaching today, actually. It should. Because we got to get under conviction on that. All right. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Okay, so Thyatira had a problem. A few things. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. So they're allowing a woman, a prophetess, called Jezebel... Keep reading to what? Seduce. To seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Wait a minute. Isn't that Balaam's doctrine? Remember, what was Balaam's doctrine again if we're going to see it alive today? It's the Catholic Church, remember? So notice that Jezebel and Balaam would be promoting the same form of doctrine. Why is that, Pastor? Because Balaam, if you're going to look back at the days of Israel, when Jezebel caused the nation of Israel to commit sexual perversion with each other and worship Baal, where did that religion come from? All the way back to Semiramis and Nimrod. See, Balaam, Jezebel, world religions, they all had a root form. Babylon of Nimrod and Semiramis. Is that alive today? Yes, the Catholic Church. So the difference here is that it's given in a female form, though. Why is it in a female form this time? Ah, because what's going on now is that during this time, they seem to be elevating a woman really high right here, like they're exalting her to the point of worship. What is this? Mariolatry, see? Mary worship. And during this time, Thyatira, it was full-blown Mary worship. And I'm not talking about Mary exaltation. It was Mary worship during that timeline in church history of the Dark Ages. Blessed Virgin, Blessed Virgin, woman, Mary, mother of God. They focus more on her than Jesus Christ, and there's something wrong with you. That is idolatry. So spiritual fornication, spiritual idolatry was alive during the timeline of Thyatira. Let's look at verse 21. And I give her space, I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. So notice right here, God claimed that he gave Jezebel time to repent, but she did not repent. So here is my uh, guesswork right here. We're going to look at the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings. This is something very interesting you're going to notice. Ahab, he repented within that small time God gave him. But Jezebel didn't. Look at the book of 1 Kings. We're going to look at chapter 21. Chapter 21. Notice it was this small time, this small time of repentance God gave to Ahab's house. Ahab repented, but Jezebel didn't. So there's that space Jezebel missed out on. 1 Kings chapter 21. <coughs> Verse 27. And it came to pass when Ahab heard those words that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. 
And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Seest thou how Ahab humbleth himself before me? Because he humbleth himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days. See, because he only had a short time. But in his Sundays will I bring evil upon his house. But he brought upon his son's days. So here's the thing is that the common thing about Jezebel's doctrine is one, it's Catholicism at its root, and it's a female elevation. That female elevation is entering churches today. Women pastors, women prophets, you know, uh, female rights, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. See, this spirit is coming out more and more and more. And that's not what God wanted. What is God's woman? God's woman was not a woman of female pride, 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 pride. No, pride goeth before destruction. Female pride, female power. No, it's humbleness, humility. That's what God wanted women. Let the women be in silence with all subjection. The Bible said, look at, uh, the, look at the book of Ruth and Esther. Women whose names were in the Bible, there's a common thing about these two women, and that was humility. Even Esther, with all her power, you know what she did? She sought Mordecai's counsel. Because why? He's an older man. And she stood up for God saying, if I perish, I perish. How many God's women do we see that in church? Let alone God's men. We don't even have men doing that, seeking elderly elders for advice and willing to die for the name of Jesus Christ. So Jezebel is alive and running today. All right, returning to our main text. And I have, to close. I have to close it here. So we'll look at verse 22 later on. We're going to see a tribulation application and a church age application at verse 22, which I'll show you later on. Let's close with a word of prayer.